Welcome to the Bodybuilding Banter Podcast, your number one source of all things bodybuilding. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future episodes. Now, here's your host, Leroy Rollins. All right, people, welcome to the Bodybuilding Banter Podcast. I'm here with my man, Will. Will, why don't you introduce yourself to the people and then we'll go from there. Yeah, so my name is Will Chikon, guys. I'm 19 years old and I am the current British Natural Team Champion of the UK. <laughs> British Natural Team Champion. That's <laughs> sick. <laughs> yeah. You Are you like super pumped about that or what? <laughs> um... If I'm being completely honest, it still hasn't sunk in, even if it's, even though it's been like two months. So when did you win? I won in October, October the October the seventh this year. That's sick, man. That's awesome. So so run me through uh, run me through that day. How how did that whole day play out? Okay, um, okay. So day before, nervous as hell. <laughs> First, it's let's first. actually let's start with is what number of show is this for you? It was the third show of the year. I did two qualifiers earlier this year, and I won both of them. Okay, okay. So third show, third show overall, or just this year? Just this year. This, this is my first season competing. Okay, awesome, awesome. All right, so you did you did two qualifiers. So now you're competing for that natural teen championship. Now let's run through that day. Yeah, so that that morning just completely, I wouldn't say nervous, I'm more chilled out and calm. Okay. Um, everything everything was just like running smoothly, I had my meals on time, um, I had my waters on time and I knew when to cut off. I cut off normally about four hours before the show. You cut and water out? Yeah, got to the sh- cut, then got to the show backstage, Yep. run through. Everything smoothly. Everything was calm. I'd say I'd only had nerves, um, literally just the the second I was about to step on stage. That was it. <laughs> just behind the curtain, ready to go, eh? Just literally behind the curtain. That's when it was like, oh, oh crap! That was actually happening. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, so how many were in your class? And um, there was. I think it was six, six or seven. I can't remember altogether. Awesome. All right. So you're out there on stage. You're feeling good. You're looking good. Then what? Like, what was the? Were they throwing you guys around? Did you get put right in the middle off the hop? How'd that all play out? Um. So initially, because we all had number badges on, so we came out in number order. Right. Yep. So, so the judges obviously. Um, saw us come out in number order first, and then after the quarter turns, yep, that he put me in the middle straight away first. <laughs> there you go. So, so I was there, and I think they put me through two rounds of posing in the middle. Right. And they switched me with um, the person that came second round, so he was in the middle afterwards. Right. So that's how it played out. Nice, nice. All right, so. Let's go through, let's start from the top. So when did you start getting, you know, serious in, into the gym? All right, so I first started when I was 16 years old. Okay. Um, I have kind of went to the gym by accident. I've always been to sports. Yep. Like, throughout my whole life. So I went to the gym, 16, and literally felt the pump and literally have not looked back since. Like, it's been, <laughs> it's been a massive obsession ever since. Nice. From being that's awesome. So did you train by yourself or did you have some buddies that kind of coaxed you into the gym or what? Yeah, so it first started out by myself. Right. I think, I think like the first two months, just joining the gym, I was just, you know, you know how it goes. Every day is arm day, chest, <laughs> chest. Yeah, chest. we're hitting the beach muscles for sure. I literally don't have a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> and then I run into this um, friend of mine who happens to live in the same town as me. Okay. And and then we just hit it off straight away and nice. then actually started learning about proper nutrition, proper bodybuilding, proper yep. rest, basically everything to do with bodybuilding three months after I joined the gym. Okay, okay. So where did you guys get your information then, like for bodybuilding? Literally, YouTube and Google. That was it. Nice. Who were you following on YouTube back then? 
Um, literally everyone, Bradley Martin, um, Simeon Panda, yep. um, the two buff dudes, um, who else was I following at the time? Um, just, just some of the main fitness people that are out there at the time yep. that are still around like right now, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Is your friend that was into it too? Is he still actively as into it as you? Yeah, he's still actively in it, but he's more on the training side of it, not much more on the bodybuilding, competing side of it. But he still trains with me on a regular basis, yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, so you're in the gym, you're 16 years old, you're, you're starting to get into it. What makes the shift of, okay, I'm just going to go to the gym to look better, feel better, blah, blah, blah. Now you're like, okay, I want to step on stage. What, what changed for you? Um... If I'm being completely honest, like where the area I live, like the West Midlands, the Birmingham side of it, okay, like there's a lot of there's a lot of amateur bodybuilders here. So for me, it was when I was seeing the people from the area that I'm from that they're competing and doing well on a national level. Yep, that's really motivated me and made me think. You know what? I actually have some decent potential to yep. do this then it was literally just being motivated by other people in my area that's what that's what was really the shift of just going to the gym to actually go to the gym and competing nice um, nice yeah i find uh you know once you get surrounded by that it's kind of hard to ignore it eh yeah definitely just group of positive people that's what it is nice so let's let's go into like your first uh you know, maybe maybe six months of, of seriously trying to, you know, build your body. What was your, what did your training look like at that time? Um, at the time, when I first started, it was like proper bodybuilding. Seriously, it was. I was currently doing um, single body parts a week. It was okay. Just the standard um, Monday chest, Tuesday back. <laughs> chest days. day Monday, right? Yeah, that was literally like just the traditional split. And I did um, two rest days a week, which I still currently do now. Okay. And my body was just reacting very quickly to that. And I started seeing changes quite a lot quicker. Obviously, I was a beginner back, a beginner back then. And yep. still kind of is not, are now. Yep. However, I thought I was seeing the new gains a lot quicker and faster, in my opinion. That's awesome. So do you remember, like... What kind of made you go, okay, like I'm I'm getting results maybe better than others? Like did your weight skyrocket? Did your strength or size? Like what, what was like, whoa, <laughs> I'm good at this? To be honest, that's a good question, you know. Um, um, I think it all happened simul simultaneously, if that yep. makes sense. Like as I was obviously adding on, a lot of tissue at the time. Yep. Like the strength started coming to. I didn't really think about strength properly until about I'd say about a year ago from now. Okay. So up until then it was strictly hypertrophy. And then when I started thinking, you know what? Let me try and change my training and make it sort of a not strength based, but start focusing on the bodybuilding compound lifts, like you know, like your squat, bench, your deadlifts. Yep. I want to start focusing on a little bit of strength, but with hypertrophy as well at the same time. Like a power so, building approach. Yeah, sort of like that. Okay. As soon as I, as soon as I did that approach, I saw like a, a massive change starting to happen in my physique. I love that. I I agree. I'm a big fan of going heavier on like the bigger movements, like. You know, say like on a on a bench, you're gonna do like a couple sets of like three or four reps, but then you'll do like higher reps and sets for your like flies and stuff, right? Yeah, hundred percent, absolutely agree with that. So, do you still currently do that? Yeah, literally, that's what I do. Like my current, how I would approach training now, I'd go um, a little crazy on the compound, not <laughs> not like not not like a, a powerlifter's approach, but. Like the lowest rep I'd probably go for is around six reps on a compound. And then anything after that is just literally contraction, hypertrophy, bodybuilding, if you would want, if you'd want to call it that. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So let's, uh, so we got into the first little bit. So now run me through, 
that first show, what was your first prep like? Did you prep with your with a coach? Were you by yourself? Did you suffer? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Let's let's dive into all that dirty details. Okay, so first prep. The first prep, believe it or not, was by myself. Like um, uh, Most people think oh, I've been prepped by a coach. Yep. But literally, this whole season, I've done it by myself. That's amazing, uh, man. And at 19, that's awesome. I know, I know. But the main reason why I wanted to prep myself this year is because I wanted to purposely make the mistake and find out what works best for my body. Like, oh, that that's cool. That's a, that's a cool start, way of looking at it. Yeah, definitely. I said from the start of the year, I wanted to actually analyze my body and not be and not think twice about making mistakes. So later on, obviously, when I start competing properly, yep. I know exactly my foundation and what work and what doesn't work. So um, that's first, cool, yeah. Because you, you like, if you had a coach and and you just kind of mindlessly followed what they told you, you wouldn't know necessarily if it's right or wrong, right? Exactly, exactly my point. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So first, first prep was literally quite, I want to say, quite basic as what it, it was just a normal approach, um, like clean started, foods. Yeah, yeah. Started off straight away, tidied up my diet. Clean foods, um, calories was at a maintenance, and I just literally started chipping off 250 calories at a time every time I got stuck at a weight or something like that, and it's literally just that. Yeah, you'd ride it out till you couldn't anymore, and then drop. Yeah, hundred percent. Gotcha. How long do you, do you remember? Like how long you might get? Like say, what was your maintenance at? Do you remember what you started at? My maintenance was at 4,000 calories. Holy shit! So how how long did you? You know, get to keep four thousand till you had to cut it. Um, roughly around three weeks, I'd say. Was that pretty average, or or did it start to kind of get sporadic as as you got d- deeper into prep? Like, was it kind of like every three weeks you kind of predicted, okay, here's another cut, here's another cut? Um, I'd say, I mean, because the first, for example, the first qualifying shows, I literally had only six weeks to get ready. That's when I like. Basically, the story behind this was I saw my friend compete at our qualifiers. Right. He's done really well. And literally, the next day, I said, you know what? I'm doing the next qualifier straight after this. So, the next day. <laughs> I'm so, in. Li- that's exactly what I did. So, the next day, I was on 4,000 calories. I stuck to that for three weeks and managed to drop, like, something like, I don't know, 24 pounds, something crazy. What? Like that. Holy I know, Jesus. Man, Dropped 24 pounds, and um, then I think from the third week, I went from 4,000 to 3,750, if I can remember from the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. Managed to drop a little bit of weight on that, and yeah, then went to my first qualifiers and won that. That's wild. Like, that's... So you lost 24 pounds on 4,000 calories. Yeah, I'm one of those people that is an ectomorph and has a really fast metabolism. Right. That plays a massive, massive difference. That's crazy. I've never heard of that. That's nuts. So what was, uh, you know, a typical day of eating for you at that point? Oh, at the start of prep? Yeah. At the start of prep, it was um, pretty simple. Loads of clean foods in there. For example, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd have oats on my way. Yep. Everything was strictly clean food. And then um, I normally like to have two meals and then go to train. So my pre-workout meal would be chicken and rice and veg. Right. After, straight after training, I'd have um, cream of rice and um, whey protein as well. Okay, so that was your so post-meal? Meal so far. And then for my last two meals, I'd have... Um, I'd have steak and potatoes for my fourth meal. And then my last meal, I'd finish off with chicken and rice again. But obviously, as prepped went on, the, the quantities of the meals got smaller. Yep, yep. Right on. Okay, so goes into that first show. Now, what was that like getting ready to step on stage for the first time? Was that, you know, nerves... You know, get. I mean, I mean, I think all of us can say like getting out there on the little in the little posing trunks is is a little scary that first time, right? Yeah. 
definitely, 100%. Like, that first show at... Um, is probably the most nervous I think I've ever been in my whole life. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. Um, like, that first time made me realise, like, backstage I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this is actually going to happen. Like, this yeah. is my first bodybuilding show, which is quite nerve-wracking. But it's a good learning experience to have, though, because next time you go out there, you know what to expect. No, exactly. Did you have a lot of uh, friends and family there at all? Yeah, I had uh, my whole family there and my friends there as well. Nice. That did help as well. Yeah, that makes a difference. Like, I find, uh, you know, when I tell people, like, you know, I've got a few people getting ready to compete here soon, and I'm like, find a family member in the audience and just kind of stare at them. Yeah, definitely. They definitely encourage you as well. Yeah, because you get looking around, and then, you know, I find if you get looking around too much, you kind of forget about what you're doing, and you get almost distracted and you know I've, I've seen people like go like going and watching shows and you see people that are you know they look distracted on stage and their posing is not great so yeah definitely all right so you came so was that a teen class as well or did you do an open one too yeah that was a teen class my first qualifiers okay so you won that one right yep Awesome. Did you win? Now, is there an overall in teens or just like the teen, that's it? Um, yeah, there was an overall as well. I got invited to the overalls, but I didn't do it. You didn't do it? Nah. Why? <laughs> I was just I was just that nervous. I was like, there's no way I can stand with these big guys. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. So you just like, like they called your name and did you like just be like, no, or did you just disappear? No, I didn't. I mean, like, I got the invite, and um, you had to come back to them. Yeah. I mean, at a certain time to come and do the overalls, and I just didn't go. I just, um, I literally won my team class, watched the rest of the show, and just went home. <laughs> just peaced out, eh? <laughs> In hindsight, are you, like, mad that you didn't do it, or are you, like, glad? Um... Looking back now, I am mad I didn't do it because it obviously just would have been great experience. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have any expectations to win, if he, even if I did it. So obviously, I'm a team competitor, but yeah. it would just have been nice to just get the experience there. For sure. Just familiarize myself with the stage again. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so you win that. So now, when is the second qualifier? The second qualifier is two weeks after that. Okay, so in between that two weeks, what did you do? Um, literally kept everything the same. Okay, didn't touch a thing? Didn't touch a thing, just kept everything the same. And I was still dropping, like, I think one pound a week at that point. Okay, so you got a little bit tighter going into the second one, eh? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. So what is your, what is your protocol? Let's say, like, you know, say, what time would you be on stage in the morning? Is it the same over here where it's, like, probably around 10 a.m.? Um... If I can remember the second show, I was on stage literally at 1 p.m. Oh, so you got longer. Okay. So so run me through, like, what's what's that morning look like for you? Like, are you, you know, obviously if you can go off 4,000 calories, like, are you, like, really carving up? Are you drinking water, cutting water, sodium? What do you do for that? All right. So that morning, if I can remember, I woke up quite full. Okay. I woke up quite full, so... I didn't didn't really change anything. I had the only difference I did change is I had one meal that morning, right? And I had water up until ten a.m. and then I cut it literally three hours before the show because I woke up full. I didn't want to, you know, have more carbs and just make myself full. I thought, you know, I'm happy with the way I look. I'm looking full and I'm looking tight. I'm yeah, you don't want to mess with that for sure. Exactly. So I thought, you know what, I'll have one meal, not carb up too much, and I'll just literally cut off water three hours before the show, and that was it. Awesome, awesome. Do you do anything fancy, uh, like when you're pumping up, like do you eat anything specific or just keep it normal? Yeah, backstage is literally strictly um, simple sugar, simple carb sugars like sweets, basically anything that can get into my system very quickly. Yeah. Munching on backstage. My last show uh, was last November, so it was right after Halloween. So we had a bunch of those like mini chocolate bars. Yeah. So I took those to the competition and I smashed a bunch of them, and that got me juicy. 
Yeah, yeah, it gets, it gets in your system very quickly. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so run me through that day then. So just another team class again? Yeah, just another team class. I was on stage at 1 p.m. Yep. Um, sadly, this qualifier was quite small. I was only against one guy. So it was literally just me and him on stage. Yep. Uh, and I still managed to win that one. Like, yep. Everything just went right that day. Awesome. And, yeah, and I was happy with it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so then now we're into the most recent one, which was all of, like, how does it all work? Is it all of the UK for that one? Yeah, so after that qualifiers, I had my first British finals, yep. which is I qualified for in my first competition. Right. And I had um, literally six weeks between my last show that I qualified for and the first British finals. I had six weeks in between that to get ready. Awesome. So in that six weeks, were you trying to do anything drastic or just kind of ride it out? Um, not anything drastic, but um, that's when prep really started to get serious. Like everything was being detailed down, calories was getting low and cardio started increasing. How much cardio were you doing near the end? Near the end, not not as much as most people do. Okay, so you you're pretty low car cardio, bleh, low cardio, eh? Yeah, I was doing half an hour four times a week. Oh my god, I'm doing that already, and I'm 20 weeks out. <laughs> oh, that's crazy, man. Okay, so you get to the British finals now. Now there's some big boys, right? You're not messing around. Yeah, yeah, pretty serious now. That's awesome. So how did so you just had to win the teens again? Yeah. Did you get an overall invite again? Yeah, I got an overall invite, and this time I did go back. boy, And how'd that go? Yeah, it went really great, actually. It was good to um, it was good to see myself against some of the very best in the country, yep. especially at overall stage as well, which is quite a big thing. For sure. And yeah, it was a great learning experience. That's and awesome. Just, and it just was good to see what I have to work towards the next few years to go yep. back up there and turn pro. That's amazing. So what did your weight do from start to finish? From like where did you start at to where you got down to? Um I'm okay. I'm trying to think of this as, as in pounds because I know you guys over there aren't too familiar with kilos. Go go kilos. I got my calculator handy right here on my phone. Give me kilos. Alright. Um I started off at uh, so at the first the, the first day of my prep I weighed in at 114 kilograms 250 what yeah holy shit <laughs> I'm, I'm quite tall as well by the way I'm six foot um three okay that, that makes sense then yeah yeah so you can kind of understand and then um on my last last show, I weighed in at 100 kilograms, which is 220, I believe. 220, yeah, yeah. So that was at the finals, you got down to 220? Yeah, just under 220. It was like 218 on the day. Gotcha. Man, that's crazy. You're a big dude. <laughs> yeah, it's the height. Yeah, that's a, and you got to fill that out, right? That's like, as nice as it is being like taller, sometimes it's harder because you got to fill that frame out. Yeah, I hate, I hate it. I, wish, I always say I wish I was like two inches shorter. Yeah. Do you remember like when you were in the overall, like did you tower over everybody? Yeah, I was the tallest one on the stage. Yeah, and that's that's tricky, right? Because if you got like some guy who's like, you know, if you were 220 and you got some guy that's like 185 and he's yeah. five foot eight, like he's going to look exactly. thick right that's up to you. Frame. They make you look smaller. Yeah, like you very rarely see like natural pros that are, Huge, right? Like height yeah. wise. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, that just that's good for you at, at the same time because you can build more muscle because you got a bigger frame. True, true. Look, true. look at it that way, right? So, yeah. how is uh, competing with school? I've I uh, I was out of school by the time I started competing. So, what's that like? Um, competing right around school, it is it is a bit stressful. Yep. But it's just time management and knowing what you're going to do at what time, as I'd like to say. Explain. So, so like meal timing with like breaks between class kind of deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically that. Like as, soon as, I, as soon as I set up my routine, 
I just literally stuck to that yep. and just went along with that. So meal timing had to be set up. Obviously, training time means after um, university and also um, sleep time as well, which obviously plays a big factor in everything. So how did you, uh, did you find there were times with like, you know, maybe exam seasons coming up or you got big tests coming up that you're like, you know, it, it's taking its toll on you because you're trying to balance everything? Yeah. Luckily, um, when the British final came along, I mean, over here on the UK, that was when we just started getting back into um, college and university. So right. there wasn't really any big exams or anything, but I still obviously had a specific routine to stick to on a daily basis Yep. for, for obviously prep. But luckily enough, I didn't have any big exams or anything or essays or anything like that. So it was That's quite good, all right at this stage. That's awesome. Okay, let's talk about uh, your family and, and bodybuilding. A, a lot of, from what I've spoken with people anyways and from where I've come from, it's kind of like weird, right? People think it's weird. Yeah. Was your family like that or were they, you know, were they always supportive or were they kind of like, hey man, why are you, you know, why are you trying to get half naked on stage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it is, it's weird for people, right? Like they think that like... It's very strange if you're looking from... Um outside point of view it doesn't make any sense yeah but you know actually we had uh my work thing they had like a christmas party last night and like i'm in prep right now so it's i'm not eating anything at the party and you know people are looking at me and they're like why don't you go eat something i'm like i can't right <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. trying to explain but it's to outsiders looking in you're right it's weird they, yeah they they probably feel like you're an alien or something like they're thinking what are you doing <laughs> yeah for sure were your friends all cool about it um at the beginning, like I'd say, like first year training, getting into bodybuilding, like my mom and dad hated it to be honest. Really, was, really, why? Yeah, strangely, because they thought they because I was sixteen at the time and I was really skinny. Yep. And, um, in a year, I managed to put on quite a lot of muscle, and they didn't like it at all. They wanted me to look like um, an average sixteen-year-old. Yeah. Did you so, ever get accused of taking drugs? Um, yeah, my dad thought I was shaking drugs at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so, be taking like, that protein stuff, kid. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he didn't. He didn't like, and he still doesn't till this day. Like, he doesn't like me taking supplements. Yeah, but he kind of understand the bodybuilding side of it now, but obviously now he's just had to accept it and just to grow into it because it's something I enjoy doing. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. So they've they've come around a little bit. Yeah, so they've kind of grown into it, but at the start, they was kind of confused. They was like, "Why, why would you want to get tanned up and stand on a stage <laughs> in front of loads of random people?" Yeah, but obviously, it's deeper than that. Like, obviously, the whole thing you learn about just bodybuilding as a whole, you can actually take aspects of it and yeah. apply it to other areas in your life. So that's what I had to explain to them and what bodybuilding is to me, really. Oh, it's huge. Like, you know, and, and you're right. Like when you explain, when you really sit down and like, if you have an opportunity to explain it to people, it's like bodybuilding has taught me like goal setting and, and looking long term and how to stick to stuff and, and all that good stuff. Right. hundred percent, hundred percent teaches you a lot of lessons. Yeah, exactly. Like I, for example, this morning I had like, I had uh, personal training clients at five. So I had to be up at the gym for 20 after four to get my cardio in that was fasted. And it's like, Again, you explain that to people, and they're like, you're going to do what? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're going to wake up when? <laughs> exactly. Which is, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad to see it, because it teaches you something that most of society wouldn't do. So, it's a really big lesson you learn in bodybuilding. And for me, too, like, I think it's the same for a lot of us. There's a certain amount of pride in, like, doing the shit you know other people aren't going to do. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know the, the amount of effort and hard work you put on a daily basis consistently yep. to towards your goal. No, for sure. Okay, let's uh, let's just talk about some random shit. What are your thoughts on supplements? Like you kind of just mentioned before supplements, but like what do you take? What do you think maybe a little bit of BS? What are your thoughts on it? Okay, so currently um, I'm literally taking creatine and um, creatine, whey, and from the top of my head, multivitamin, and that's literally it. 
Yep, um, the basics. I, yeah, I've never, t- in my opinion, I've never really been a big fan of supplements. Yeah. I'm still not to this day. I'm more, I'm more old school and I just like the approach of trying to get as much from... Eat food. food. Yeah, I'm one of those type of people. Yep. Hey, and, and you can't deny the results you've gotten with that mentality, right? Like, that's that's the one thing people ignore. They're like, everybody's got an opinion, but, like, the results speak for themselves. 100%. Like, like nowadays, like, your your average new gym goer who just gets a gym membership today, they get their gym membership, and the first thing they're saying, oh, what supplement should I take? Like, yeah, yeah, they get their membership. They, they get their membership. They don't even go train. They get their membership, then they go to the supplement shop. Exactly, and to <laughs> me, it's like you got it backwards. Like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like, there's no foundations there. The foundation there should be firstly your nutrition, which is should be real food, is what I believe. Yep, no, I agree, hundred percent. Like, I've got young clients who are you know young in their training career, and they're like, you know, blah blah. blah okay, like I'm gonna do this for work. Okay, what supplements do I need? I'm like, whoa, exactly. whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't need any. Like, technically, you don't. You don't really need any. If you've got a couple extra bucks, maybe, you know, kind of like what you listed there, like a good whey protein, especially, you know, if you're in school between classes, it's easier to pound back a shake. I can understand that. Maybe a good multivitamin. But again, if you eat enough fruits and vegetables, you don't even really need that. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's so, you're right, it's so backwards. Get that training down. Get that nutrition down. And then maybe we'll talk. <laughs> exactly. So what about uh, let's let's go into this one. This is always this is a popular subject right now. If it fits your macros versus clean eating. Um, in my opinion, I'm not really a fan of if it fits your macros because to me it just implies that you're giving yourself an excuse to eat whatever junk you can. Yeah. Just to fill up those macros, which to me doesn't make any sense. Whether it's clean eating. You know, you're getting quality, quality nutrition and obviously vitamins in your food and that compared to something like if it fits your macros. Like, to me, it wouldn't make sense having, I don't know, McDonald's all day. Yeah, I agree. Whereas, whereas you can have clean eating and maybe, you know, the odd Mac, McDonald's diet meal in there. That would make much more sense to me than just filling up your diet with junk just to reach a certain number. It doesn't make any sense to me, to be honest. Yeah, people, people try to abuse it, right? Like they'll, you know, they'll save all their carbs for the end of the day and then they'll smash some ice cream. Exactly. Like, and it's like, it's that's just, not how it's done. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't make any sense. And to be honest, it doesn't seem consistent as well Like throughout the day. Like you're eating random things on a day-to-day basis. Like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, your body doesn't know what to really expect. Like, I'm, I I don't care what anybody says. Like, everybody's got foods that probably don't digest and sit as well, right? Like, for me, I'm not a big fan of dairy. Like, I used to be when I was younger. But now, like, if I even have, like, a glass of milk, like, I just don't feel good after. So if I'm trying to fit milk into my carbs, like, what's exactly. the point? Why wouldn't I just have rice or potato or something? Exactly. Whereas if you're someone, like, I'm sure someone like yourself – that has a, a diet that you follow on a daily basis, that you reach your macros on a daily basis, for you to suddenly then start tomorrow to just feel like, you know what, I'm going to have McDonald's today, and then yeah. the next time going to be like, oh, I want to have this today. It doesn't make any sense. I don't think it sits well with the body as well, because I like to think of the body as like um, like a rhythm, like something you do every day it gets you used to. Yeah. And if you're just suddenly every day just chucking in whatever just to – fill out your macros to me it's not really the smartest approach i'd say no i agree and and it's 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 interesting like you when you again when you look at you know we said results speak for themselves like when you look at all the pros like they're eating yeah. the same shit like they really are yeah exactly and people exactly. are trying to find that easy way out of like okay well what if i only have this much blah blah, blah. and like if you're the average person i'm sure you can get away with it a little bit more but if you're someone like you and i that are trying to like build this sculpture, basically, then yeah. it might not be the best approach. Exactly, exactly. As what you if, said, they're literally looking for the easy way, easy way out. Yeah. And like you know, how many people on the Olympia stage are on the if it fits your macro? <laughs> yeah, that exactly. Exactly. So it's just people looking for an easy way out, not willing to do the hard work. Yeah. 
What about, uh, you know, quote unquote cheat meals or refeeds when you were prepping or anything, did you do anything like that? Or if you're in your off season now, do you, do you structure that at all? Yeah. So when I was prepping, it was literally, um, I did incorporate cheat meals and refeeds, but because my carbs were already, already high, I didn't really feel the need to introduce refeeds. Yeah. So I just literally stuck to one cheat meal a week, which is obviously just for us traditional bodybuilders, it was just on a Saturday, which was just one cheat meal. Yep. And that was it really. And when I'm in the off season now, um, obviously I have my traditional diet that I have on a daily basis, which is quality food. Yep. But say like, I don't know, if I'm feeling peckish and I want like <laughs> a little bit of ice cream on a daily basis, like it, it, it won't bite. You know, the way I see the off season, you're trying to get big anyway. So then extra calories won't do too much trouble as long as you don't go overboard though. Yeah. You've like, got, you've got that playroom. Yeah. Exactly. So when you, when you would cheat on a Saturday, what would you have? Um, to be honest, I'm not really a foodie if you would say so. So I'm, I don't really go crazy, but I have just like um, in America, you'd call it French fries yep. and uh, um, um, chicken. Literally, <laughs> like I'm, I'm not, I don't like anything fancy. If He's anything, simple. Just, He's a simple man. <laughs> like, if anything, I was just eating what I was normally eating on prep, but just with a bigger portion, and I just have like candy or something. You know? Oh yeah, okay. That, that's it, really. It's a simple but effective approach, right? Yeah. Right on, right on. All right, man. Well, we are almost 40 minutes into this, so let's wrap this up. I'm just going to give you like some random questions, just like a Q&A to finish this off. Yeah, sure. All right, man. What is your favorite body part to train? Favorite body part to train? Damn. At the minute right now in the off season is arms. It changes all the time. <laughs> awesome. So on an arm day, what are like maybe two exercises for bicep and two for tricep that you're for sure going to do? All right, so first one is definitely barbell curls. Just a straight like, up curl. It should be in everybody's bicep workout. And the second bicep exercise, I'd say, is probably dumbbell hammer curls. Okay. For your biceps. I just love doing them. I've always done them from the start and still do them to this day. Yep. And for triceps, I'd say, is definitely rope extensions. Okay. And skull crushes. Nice, nice. Skull crusher with a bar, with a cable, easy bar? Um, uh, EZ bar. Nice, nice. Um, all right, what is, what is looking at your physique objectively, what is, uh, you know, an area or two you need to work on? Um, truthfully speaking, I want to work on my back and okay. my hamstrings. So kind of like a full posterior chain kind yeah, of deal. Yeah, literally the back of my posterior chain, if I'm being truthfully honest with myself. Nice, nice. I like it. Um, what's the game plan uh, for stepping on stage again? Um, the game plan is to have a very long off season. Okay. Since, since it was just my first season this year, I'm not really too much of a fuss of getting back on stage because I know I'm still a teen and I don't have as much muscle mass to just get on stage next year. So the plan yep. is to take two years off. Come back in 2020 as a junior bodybuilder. Nice. Hopefully try um do what I did this year. <laughs> Just clean house, eh? Hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, what is your biggest pet peeve in the gym? Biggest pet peeve in the gym? Uh, when people don't put their weights back, it actually frustrates me. <laughs> Yeah, that's annoying as hell, eh? <laughs> yeah, like when you're in an area and there's someone next to you and, and they're doing whatever, and I don't know, and they just leave with their dumbbells on the floor right next to you. It's just like, come on, man. You just want to throw one at them, eh? <laughs> yeah. I'd say just um, people leaving their equipment all over the floor. Yeah, yeah. What is your biggest piece of motivation that keeps you, you know, plucking away on this journey? Um... Biggest piece of motivation. Um, I don't know if this is the biggest piece of motivation, but the fact that you're never satisfied. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that man. That's that's perfect. I think we're all like that, honestly. I I don't think I've ever spoke to someone that competes that's ever happy with their physique or anything. Like no one's happy. No, there's always you're always looking at like. 
what to improve on, what can I get bigger, what can get leaner, what can exactly. That's exactly, it's exactly right. It's that that constant mindset of just getting better than you was last time. I think that's that's just what keeps me going. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, man. Last one. What is your biggest piece of advice for someone getting ready? Maybe they're getting ready for their first show. Maybe they're getting ready to prep for the first time. What's your biggest piece of advice to, to let them take away with? Biggest piece of advice for someone competing. Um, number one, never stop researching. Like Research as much as possible like on a daily basis if you can. Yep. Um, number two, as well as the positives, be aware of the negatives of competing. You know, you're not always going to feel 100% on. Yeah, very rarely near the end of it do you feel 100%. I, f- I feel with, especially with social media nowadays, people are so focused on the positives and that, and you sort of think like, it's just going to go smoothly and really it's not. It's going to be like, it's going to be a bumpy road going yep. there, down there, and you have to be prepared to adapt to the situation. And last one I'd say is um, focus on the end goal. For Even sure. though there's going to be some um, bumpy and hurdles along the way, just focus on the end goal and remember why you're doing it and who you're doing it for is what I'd say. Nice. Good way to end this, man. All right, man. Quickly uh, plug your Instagram and stuff. I'll have it up on screen here, but uh, you know, shout it out. Where can people find you? Give you a follow. All right. So Instagram is Will Chicom, W-I-L-L-C-H-I-C-O-M-B. On Instagram and it's the same for Twitter and Snapchat. Awesome. Are you on YouTube at all? Um, yeah. All right. All right. Well, everybody, go give this man a follow. Check out his six foot three physique. This kid. <laughs> this kid's got big things coming. He's only nineteen. This that's gonna blow. That's gonna blow you away when you go check out his Instagram. The fact that he's only nineteen. So, all right, man. Well, I'd like to thank you for coming on. We'll have to do this again sometime soon. Definitely. Thank you for having me on as well. It's my first podcast, so big, big respect to you, brother. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. Thanks again, and uh, we will talk soon. Have a good rest of your day. Peace out. See you, bud.